great to see the story come to life. Just before Christmas, a woman woke up and told her husband, I just had a dream that you gave me a diamond necklace for Christmas. What do you think the dream means? Um, oh, well, her husband replied, you'll soon find out. Well, the next morning, Christmas Eve, the woman said the same thing to her husband. I dreamed that dream again last night that you gave me a diamond necklace on Christmas morning. What could it possibly mean? Well, you'll find out tomorrow, said her husband. And sure enough, on Christmas morning, she turned again to her husband. You know, that dream won't go away. I dreamt that today you were going to give me a diamond necklace. And he smiled back and said, well, you'll find out today. And then later he presented her with a small package, carefully wrapped. And his wife was so overjoyed that she excitedly opened the present and found inside a book. And the title of the book was the meaning of dreams. <laughs> well, I don't know if you've got what you dreamed of this morning, but I can promise you that you can receive, maybe not diamonds, but just what you really need, something far more precious than diamonds or silver or gold, the gift of Jesus, the greatest gift of all. Mary wrapped the first Christmas present. And on this Christmas morning, as we have just sung, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. That's why we do all that we do. That's what all this preparation and giving has been about for God, for Jesus. He is a gift waiting to be discovered. I just want us to think about this morning, the discovery. I wonder if, like me when you were young, some of the children might play this game still, hide and seek. And uh, we're going to put a little picture up of a, a game of hide and seek. One person hides themselves away while another closes their eyes and counts maybe to 10 or to 20 and then it's coming ready or not. And the hunt is on. And you know, when you look at the Christmas story, it's a bit like a game of hide and seek. Think about the stories we've heard in Advent. For hundreds of years, the Old Testament prophets were longing for God who seemed hidden away. And like a buried seed, the coming of Jesus was hidden until the time was right. He was born in Bethlehem. We see a picture now of the nativity. Born to a simple peasant girl in a small, obscure town, tucked away in a manger, no room at the inn, an inn full of feasting and happiness, but no room for God. And we each pray today, Lord, let that not be the case in my house, just feasting, but no room for remembering. And then the announcement of his birth at night on the hillside to those shepherds. Again, hide and seek. And the wise men playing hide and seek with the star. Yes, there's so much about Christmas that's hidden away, that's not immediately obvious. And many today will miss the meaning. They'll have Christ, sorry, they'll have Christmas but without Christ. 
Jesus takes some seeking out. Are we looking for him? Are we expecting him? Yes, a baby, but so much more. Think of the many titles of Jesus, and we'll put some on the screen there. He is our peace, our saviour, the way, the truth, the life, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Alpha and Omega, greater than the Omicron. He is the mighty one. He is all these things and more to those who seek him out. So God says to us, coming ready or not, and we say the same back to God. Lord, come to me. I might not feel 100% ready, but come. Come to me. Let me lay before you the best of all that I have and all that I am. Let me worship you. And the last picture, the picture of the infant Jesus. A child in need. And that reminds us that we can find Jesus among the poor and needy. Hidden away out of sight today will be those working in the Salvation Army kitchens, making meals for those who would be on their own today. And much of the ministry of Christ is hidden, but it's real and it's active. It's happening now. On the radio, we sometimes hear the song by Michael Bublé singing, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, which includes that line, From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. But we know that's not really the case. Christmas seems to magnify our troubles or our pain. But with a closer look, we see Jesus right there in the midst, in the pain and in the muddle and in the uncertainty of these times. And that's what we're learning to live with, isn't it? We're not sure, we're waiting for announcements. What are we allowed to do? What can't we do? And how wonderful today to know that when everything is up in the air, God came down to earth. God came down to be with you. Feeling our sorrow. So from Manger Square in Bethlehem to the Market Square in Haverhill, God is here. It's a secret no more. So today, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. The stable door. Amen. So let's uh, join in singing a worship song of response today with some words that we've changed slightly.
today, now is the time to reach for it. And, and you can open it. <laughs> You've been waiting long enough. personal present and uh, I think if Dave received this he'd probably send it back but it's just right for me. It's the West Ham United. <laughs> Brilliant. West Ham a bit like the Christmas decorations. We always come down after Christmas. <laughs> well I hope you enjoyed those gifts that you've received. Well, Joe and I are now going to lead us in our prayers for others on this Christmas morning. So let's pray. We pray for the world on Christmas Day. For everyone who is sad or lonely today. For those who are bereaved and miss loved ones. For everyone who didn't get a present. For everyone who couldn't afford to give presents. For the poor and hungry. For the homeless and the unemployed. We pray today for those families who will have been helped by REACH and the Food Bank this Christmas. We remember the children who will have opened the gifts brought to our toy service and those opening shoebox gifts around the world. We remember the Salvation Army serving Christmas lunches today. The visit of the angels to the shepherds remind us that you come to us in the workplace just as much as in the worship place. So we remember and pray for all who will be working this Christmas. For those who work in our emergency services, utilities, in hospitals and prisons, at sea, and in the armed forces. We pray for those affected by coronavirus. 
We pray for all those who are separated from their loved ones today. We pray for refugees seeking safety. We pray for persecuted Christians around the world celebrating the birth of Christ in secret. And now let us have a moment of silent prayer to pray for those on our hearts. May the light of his star touch every dark place. Show them all your love, O oh God, and show us how we can give them your love. In fullness or emptiness, let us find our peace and contentment in you. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Emmanuel. God with us. Amen. And let's join in saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Just before we sing our final carol, a reminder there's no... Sunday service here tomorrow on Boxing Day. But our next service will be on Sunday the 2nd of January at half past 10. An all age service followed by lunch. A bring and share lunch. And if there are any changes to affect any of our plans, then we'll let you know in the Connect on Friday the 31st. So let's Join in singing our closing song, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
we dedicate our gifts to the Lord. Chloe Ann is going to come and lead our final prayer. God with us. Let us go in peace. Let us go to share God's love. Let us go with God's blessing. Happy Christmas and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.